Kevin, I'm interested to know what you thought of the way we paired these wines at all the different restaurants throughout the week. I mean, there was traditional uh, pairing to complement the wines, and then there were a complete contrast to, to make people like think, really? Like, you know, cherry tomatoes with Chardonnay? Um, I, was, I was blown away by the versatility of these wines. I'd love to know what you think about them as well. Well, with Italian cooking, you have lots of different ingredients. It's not just putting veal on the table or pork on the table or, uh, you know, prosciutto on the table. It's there's always more. There's the cheeses. There's the there's the um, vegetables. There's the tomatoes. Uh, and the great thing I like about having tomato or tomato sauce uh, is the acidity. Um, and actually, I, I make my own tomato sauce, so I know this all too well. I want to have that acidity there. And one of the best combinations that you can have uh, with wine is a wine with high acid going up with a food with high acid. They act, it sounds like they might not work, but actually it works perfectly. So uh, the wines that we had today, uh, uh, especially the Barbera, the, the, had that acidity that just brought out more and more flavors that you probably wouldn't have had if you didn't have the wine. Danielle, as a fellow wine blogger, we're always trying to tell our readers about what's new, what's hot, from where. We know that Moscato's been really hot for over a year now in this country. People love it. But we also know that there is discernment between cheap Moscato that comes from you know, places all over the planet for five bucks a bottle, and then there's the real deal, the Moscato d'Asti from Piedmont, which represents you know, the highest quality and still not the highest prices. They're amazingly priced wines. How do you plan to tell your readers about these wines and what to look for, especially from those from Piedmont? Well, Anthony, I think that uh, the wine we tried tonight was very delicate. Um, sweet wine, which is kind of hard to find, a balanced sweet wine. It's also kind of hard to find a good quality sweet wine that is not expensive. Um, I thought that it paired very well with the dessert and um, it's, it was very approachable, especially even for somebody who doesn't particularly gravitate toward sweet wines like myself. Um, it was very balanced and um, I would definitely recommend trying a bottle of it if you've never tried a sweet wine before. Louise, it's so great to see you here again. And as a, as a tastemaker, as a winemaker, as a trendsetter, as someone who's taken risks in their career, I'd love to know what you think about the Chardonnay we debuted here. Um, Catina Canelli introducing a grape that's certainly well known to Americans, but represents a very unique, um, very dry style of Chardonnay, very food friendly, not, mu not necessarily like the New World styles of Chardonnay as food. Well, Anthony, I've had such a great time with these wines and honestly I was very surprised to see the kind of freshness and quality they have. I personally like a Chardonnay to be totally dry and I get upset when I have a wine served to me that's called Chardonnay but finishes sweet. So I was especially pleased by this Chardonnay because it's extremely fresh. Um, it has some real dimension to it. It's very lively and absolutely pure and true to what I like to see in Chardonnay. Okay, so Wanda, as an entertaining expert, how do you plan to tell your readers about the versatility of these wines and their affordability? I mean, when we talk Cantina Canelli, we're talking wines that cover every possible category of wine for every possible means of entertainment, and yet we're talking prices that are unbelievably affordable. How do you plan to share that with your readers? Anthony, that's a great question. I think for my readers, they'll always be drawn to Italian wines because they're innately elegant. That goes without saying. But I think the versatility and affordability of the Cantina Sociale de Canelli wines will really be a draw to them. You have everything from the Pinot Grigio to the red wines, the Barbera, and the sweet wines, the Moscato. So I think for my readers, they'll enjoy sipping them at home and really taking their casual meals to the next level. And also enjoy taking them out, you know, when they're invited to cocktail parties. It's it's a wonderful hostess event, and no one will ever know that the wine costs under $20 because they taste much more expensive.